Hey everybody, it's Dave, Blue Jacket 66 here with my first video from the new house, uh, and b to be more specific, from my new office slash card room slash safe space slash vault. Um, got some shelving up over here, my dehumidifier. This is a big desk that goes up high, kind of beyond what you see, and some stuff over there. Don't have anything on the walls. Put up a couple cards. Have some little stuff on the shelf. Just starting to kind of put things together. But pretty excited about that. Um, the space itself, it's, it's kind of a room. It's not very big, but looks can be deceiving. Um, it's not all just here on this level. If you've ever seen the, uh, um, the beginning of the show, Get Smart uh, credits. That's kind of how this was built. There's a... Uh, real advantage toward building a house and you can build into it what you want seen and unseen. But the video today I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at two auctions that are ongoing. Uh, I think they're fantastic auctions closing tonight or a couple others. Uh, Bagger's auction has a lot of nice vintage, uh, low grade and raw, very affordable Bagger's auction if you're never looking at that. And SCP, and I don't know what they have going on is closing tonight. I think maybe Clean Sweep Auctions is closing tonight or soon. But I'm really not going to look at any of those. I'm going to look at uh, the Blockbuster Auction uh, from uh, Memory Lane. Um, it's the best auction that I personally have seen in probably four to five years, personally. And another big auction from Robert Edwards Auction. I'm actually bidding on a lot more stuff in that. Uh, the memory lane is just over the top. So we're going to take a look at both those auctions. We're going to look at, uh, you know, each one of them have 2,000 lots or so, at least, in them. I'm not going to look at every lot and go through. I'm going to go through things that I think are interesting. Then I'm going to go through some things that I think are, uh, that perhaps some people should look at and consider purchasing. Then I'll look at, uh, I like going through, um, what items so far have the most bids, which have the highest bids. And then for full disclosure, because some people think you shouldn't be outing auctions, like Dave Berg's outing an auction where, you know, uh, tens and tens of thousands of people uh, get uh, catalogs for this and it's known worldwide. So I'm not outing anything, uh, but to be fair, I will show you the, the lots I'm bidding on. Because if you want to win a card, uh, you bid high and you bid the highest. It's pretty easy, okay? You can complain about, uh, oh, I was the underbidder, blah, blah. You bid high, you go for it, and you win the card. It's pretty easy. I tend not to win cards in most uh, auctions because I'm not willing to, to go there. But in the end, some of these auctions, you better be willing to go there because you're never going to see it again or you're going to wish you did. So there might be a card or two in this auction that I bid beyond what I'm even comfortable with or what I think the current value is. Uh, because I want them badly enough, and I know I will not regret it. So we're going to take a look at those, um, and uh, I think that there's some uh, really interesting stuff. Memory Lane just hit it out of the park. Memory Lane has uh, essentially, when I think of Memory Lane, I, I typically think of a little bit more of a vintage side of Mile High. Mile High has an auction going too, when I think of Mile High, I think a lot of high-grade uh, 50s through 70s cards. That's kind of what I think for them. They'll have other stuff, too. And Memory Lane, I kind of think the same way, that Memory Lane has uh, some significant big-level consigners, and they are uh, consigning stuff out of their collection. There's also a lot of 1914 uh, uh, Cracker Jacks. There's a lot of uh, D304 bread cards. Uh, E98s, there's, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's, memory lane is blowing me away. REA, of course, is huge. Uh, it's one of their kind of quarterly auctions. It's not their, one of their encore auctions. It's one of their big ones. So there's good stuff in that. And uh, I'm hoping, really hoping to win uh, a th something or two out of uh, REA. You know, you just got to be careful because you can end up winning two items and then you've got a huge problem. These auction houses are pretty interesting. Um, so 
Robert Edwards, Love of the Game auction just ended. When did it end? Last weekend or something like that. And Robert Edwards' auction is ending here this Sunday, just in a couple days. But Memory, you know, Memory Lane came out with a preview, what, 10 days ago. They're very smart. Let, let me show you what we got going, fellas, and let's see if you're still going to uh, bid in love of the game. And maybe some big card you wanted in Robert Edwards' auction, you think maybe you're going to pass on because of what we going on at Memory Lane. So they didn't wait and release their auction, you know, a preview four weeks before or... Uh, you know, and open it up for a two weeks auction. I mean, they are open, and I don't think it closes until uh, May, I don't know, May, May 7th, something like that. Um, so these auction houses are smart. Uh, they see that other big auctions are live and closing. They'll go ahead and release their preview, and that's what happens to me a lot. See something in uh, Heritage I like. Oh, it's a big card. I'm, I'm gonna. I really want that one. Then Love of the Game shows their preview or opens, and whoa, forget it. Heritage. I see something Love of the Game. Next thing you know, REA released their auction, showed their preview. Uh, I'm gonna pass on Love of the Game. I'm going. I, you kind of kick the can down the road into what kind of card you want because I cannot. You know, you can't. Most of us can't afford these cards in every auction. Uh, uh, and the days of me buying, you know. 1958 uh, Warren Spawns are over. They're over. I want special cards. If I buy three cards all year long, perfectly fine with me. I'm going to go big in these auctions. I'm going to try hard. Strongsville's coming up uh, uh, this coming weekend. Uh, I'll bring enough for hot dogs and Cokes, but uh, I, I, I wink, wink. I'm, I'll buy something if I see something good there, but I'm honestly saving my money for these blockbuster auctions. So I got to reach forward here. We'll take a look at them. Okay, let's get started with REA. This is their uh, front page. I don't know how many lots they have. I didn't count them, but probably over 2,000, maybe quite a bit more. So we'll just kind of run through their first page. Uh, their first item here is, is kind of interesting to me. 54 tops Hank Aaron. Let's take a look at it in a PSA 9, and uh, what's interesting to me is it's it's got a rough cut on here, and I think it's, it's like the fourth card from the left. So it's got this rough cuff on the left, which is pretty common, but it's also got a rough cut on the right. So essentially, You've got, you don't really have to account too much for the corners, because it's all rough cut. Um, so it doesn't seem to me, there's a corner, and that's a nine. Now these are all rough cuts, there's the other corner. Oops. It's hard to see that one. That's a pretty good looking corner, but all rough cut, so I don't know. Pretty easy to get a nine, I, I think, if you got rough cuts on two sides, because the corners are going to be uh, not really into play. So, okay, let's uh, move on down. There's a couple on the front page that I want to take a look at. We'll go down to... First is number, these are the ones that I find interesting. Then I'm going to do kind of some recommendations or so. Um, and I'm doing this all left-handed because my right shoulder is, uh, and right off, I saw this. Oh, boy. Yeah, the 1869 uh, Cincinnati Red Stockings, Peck and Snyder. This is, this is the first baseball team, I think, right? The first baseball team. Um, and this is, uh, this card has a lot of history. Uh, if you want to do some interesting reading, uh, Google Peck and Snyder, Cincinnati, uh, Peck and Snyder, Cincinnati Reds, net 54. And, uh, at one point, one of these cards was stolen from the New York library, New York public library. 
uh, several years ago, and it was a big deal to get it returned, and there was controversy in the hobby, so uh, look that up sometime. But this, I was shocked to see this, to be honest with you. Uh, I haven't seen this card personally come up for auction uh, uh, many, many years, so that is way cool. Uh, let's see what we got next. Up a little bit that I wanted to show that I thought was interesting, and this is just this outstanding 49 leaf page and an SGC7. Um, look at that, yikes. So we're not gonna be looking at any non-vintage cards, I guarantee it. This auction is full of vintage, uh, to a lesser extent modern, but it's primarily vintage. We're not going to be looking at 80, 50s, 60s, 70s cards, I don't think. Um, I really just like the uh, earlier vintage uh, and the pre-war, uh, but this catalog or this auction has autographs, memorabilia, non-sport. It's a big time. And so here's a big time card. Uh, starting bid was 25000 uh, I'm not really signed in, so we can't really... I do need to sign in, though. Oh, crud. Let me put you on hold here. Okay, now I am all uh, signed in here. So just running through some of these other things. Let me see if there's anything else. Page one that I really wanted to look at. Bunch of old judges. Let's just... Instead of scrolling through, because you guys can find the auction and scroll through, I'm just going to go uh, search the lots. For ones that I think are interesting, and then we'll for ones that are my recommendation. Okay, next ones that I think is interesting: uh, the N one seventy three Cap Anson, N one seventy twos. Of course, tiny little cards. These are quite a bit uh, larger and have different backs on them. Uh, uh, fantastic! Uh, I haven't seen this one. Before, it's authentic. Believe me, you're like, oh, it's authentic. Nobody cares. Nobody cares if this is authentic versus a one or two. As far as these kind of cards go and these cabinet cards, nobody cares it's an authentic. I learned that years ago when I, uh, I submitted something to uh, REA, actually. I think it was REA, yeah. Um, and it was a Duke cabinet. And uh, I sent it in raw to them, and they sent it to SGC, and it come back, they recolored a little bit on the edge. Uh, and they said, nobody nobody cares with cards like that. Nobody cares uh, if they're authentic. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. This, this is, a, uh, I think, a good one. I've seen this once, just because I've seen it once doesn't mean anything, but I, th this 1907 Walter Johnson from the Wiser Wonder, uh, pre-Major League team, and it's just a fascinating, it's a postcard, there's nothing on the back, but somebody wrote something on the front, let's see what it says, exceedingly rare postcard, when he was a member of the Wiser Baseball Club in 1907, uh, it's rarity aside, we know of only one other example it comes with a unique providence uh, of having been Walter Johnson's personal example. So here are a few postcard guys, and I do know one of us uh, YouTubers who is putting in a bid for uh, that and going for it. Good luck. I'm not a postcard guy, but that doesn't mean I'm not thinking that that is super, super uh, cool. All right. What else do we got for us, REA, that I think is interesting? Uh, it, well, the E92 American Caramel is Honus Wagner. This is, of course, shooting up. Wagners are shooting up. Uh, just a, it's a great pose. It's going to go for, it's a two. It looks fantastic. Uh, it does have some paper loss here. Probably, I'm not sure if that should be a two uh, with that paper loss there. And there's some down there. Uh, but then again, believe me, pe people, and you can see I bid on, <laughs> I bid on, I guess you'll see some of these that I bid on, uh, but, uh, people don't care. Um, regionally issued, 
Pittsburgh, only members of the Pirates uh, are part of it. Just a beautiful, beautiful image. So that's another one that I thought was an interesting card. Let's see what else we got. Of course, the Ramleys. Uh, I believe that there's a Walter Johnson in this one, and I believe that Memory Lane has a Walter Johnson too, I think. Um, and this is the, you know, this classic T206 image and Ramley has to be one of the most beautiful sets ever. You know, it's got the Walter Johnson, but unfortunately it doesn't have Cy Young. It doesn't have Matthewson. It doesn't have Cobb. It doesn't have Wagner. If it had those, it would be, I think, immensely uh, popular with those portraits on that card. Um, but they they come with Ramley Turkey Turkish cigarette backs and then with backs that don't see that uh, great card uh, let me see how great that was a four yeah this uh, all that beautiful gold leaf tends to get flaked off just like on T205s um, just I want to tell you that's fantastic uh, I think that that's a Interesting card in this wonderful REA auction. Let's see what else I thought was awesome. That is this uh, Jones, Kaiser, and Aris card, these cabinet type cards. You can see I bid on that too. Um, also called JKAs is really what you come by. Um, Extremely care, uh, rare cabinet card issued in uh, 1911 by this uh, these studios of uh, Jones, Kaiser, and Eris. Uh But really don't know much about the set. Um, but there are some big time, big time Hall of Famers in this. This is a one uh, because it's got pinhole here, pinhole here. Again, with cards like these, nobody cares. Absolutely nobody cares. Uh, I think I'm not sure if yeah I bid on that one too. When I say a bid on it, I'm not I'm not up there. The next bid's twenty thousand. It's not like I bid nineteen thousand. It means when this auction opened, I put a place a placer bid. A placer bid is where I just run through the auction for cards that I think there's a possibility I may want, even if it's a low possibility, and I just put in a real early bid that there's no way in heck that I'm going to win it. But just later on, it gives me opportunity to bid on it when the auction goes to overtime. Usually these auctions run for, say, 10 days. Uh, then around, it depends on, on, the, on the auction house, it will, the auction will end. And if you have bid on a card such as this one, you may continue to bid on it in overtime. But if you have not, uh, you can't bid on it anymore and there's no way you can win it. So I put in these little, small little placer bids. Um, Soon as an auction opens, I just run through it. I don't put a bunch of bids on cards that I know I don't want, or it's impossible. I know there's no chance I'm going to win. That just that's kind of silly. But okay, let's see another one on my. I guess we'll call it kind of my wish list. And that's this. Uh, I may try to get serious about this one. Uh, the star player Candy Cobb. Um. This set is really, really rare. Didn't, this summer, didn't, uh, was it Memory Lane or was it Mile High that had the, they had a, uh, a Ruth. I think they had a Gehrig too, right? Let's see. Let's see what it says here. Um, extremely rare, Halshamer Ty Cobb, issued in, in the late 20s. Eight examples of Cobb graded by both PSA and SGC to date. Um, it's his last card as a player. Um, so right up my alley. I did contact, and again, nobody cares that it's altered. Nobody. Um, I'll tell you how it is altered, because it, it's kind of unusual for REA not to say why it was altered. So I called him, and they said it was uh, lightly trimmed across this top. Here's some heavy wear here. And sometimes if there's heavy wear and it looks like someone went ahead and 
trimmed around it or something, they'll call that authentic. So I was wondering if there was just, because it's so unusual wear on these corners. I wonder if somebody just even used their hand, tore off the corners to make, yeah, and they'll call that altered. But it, no, they say it's uh, this top. So that is a fantastic shoe. And I'm going to make a run for that. Uh, I have no idea what it's going to go for. Probably way out of my price range, but. What else you got for us? And by the way, this ends Sunday night. Sunday night. And I really recommend, I don't want, at most, almost all auction houses, I have emailed them or called them and say, do not send me your catalogs because I, I just don't want catalogs anymore. But uh, they all these major auction houses, all you have to do is put a bid on a card and they'll start sending you, you'll get on their list and they'll start sending you catalogs. You don't have to win, just get on their auction site, place a bid, even if it's, you know, ridiculously low and uh, you'll get on their list. I guess this is this star cane. I guess I really want it. Okay, what else we got here? Besides this, keeps popping up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a little later one, but I love home run derby cards. Specifically, who else? You know, the mantle, which I have. The uh, maze and Aaron. I do not have maze. I do not have Aaron. I think I yeah, bid on this one. Next bid is $2,800. we will see what it goes for. Um, you guys know all know Home Run Derby, and that's a seven, which is a really high grade, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful image. So out of all the thousands, those may not be interesting at all to you, but they're kind of just ones for me. And believe me, if you run through the first three pages, or 10 pages, you're going to run through tons of one that just blow your mind. There are thousands of cards, and these, the ones I'm showing you, are by no means the best cards. But I can't do that. I can't make a 10 hour video, so I'm just showing some cards. But let's get down to, and I gotta keep keep it going here. This is, I think this may be what we call a driving one, where you're just kind of driving along because you can't just sit there and, and watch this video so long. But um, I guess it's gonna be kind of long. Okay, these are Blue Jackets recommendations for fellow YouTubers. Man, I recommend this one. Uh, the E90 American Caramel, Cy Young. I do not have this card, and it's just a beautiful card, and it's pretty well centered, which is uh, uncommon for this. In a four, which is a really good grade. I always wish he rode up a little higher. They zoomed in a little bit higher. He's got so much red above him, but I really recommend this card. I think that there's a lot of potential, a lot of potential with this card, especially this one looking so nice. And a four. Take a look at the back. Okay, 100 subjects in this set by the American Caramel Company. Um, I do not have a bid on that one, but I may still put a bid in. What else do I recommend? Mm-hmm. Highly recommend this. And I'm an active bidder on this and I really want it. So full disclosure, I'm not just outing auctions. I'm showing you cards that I really, really want. You know, these E95s are so uh, uh, tough. Um, and this one's, it's got big ass borders on it. Really. That is nice. Um, uh, let's see. One of Cobb's most beautiful design and cards. Uh, E95 Philadelphia, exceptional mid-grade. Just, I, I see these a lot in two to three. Do not see many above there. I think I may have seen a four, but it wasn't centered like this. This is an outstanding example that I highly recommend you make a go for. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, 
there's just a, just a beauty, this E93 this, uh, standard, caramel cob. Oh, holy moly, that is just gorgeous. I'm going for that one. Here is my Matthewson. Beautiful cards. Now that uh, same po same pose as the E94 and E98 Cobb. Um, so I'm hot for that one, and I hope you are too. Because again, highest bidder. Love to see one of you guys win that. Would love it. Okay, what else? What else do I got? I'm recommending. Okay, yeah, well, here we go. Uh, the E98 Matthewson. Um, it's in a pour, deservedly. A little smudgy there. Um, I wish they had a... That's lost there. I wish they had a... I, I've got the blue, I've got the green. It also has a red background and an orange, which I do not have. Um... But these, these are so much harder to find than the cobs. Here's mine. It's in a two and looking good. It's got, mine has a tiny bit of paper loss there at the top. But otherwise it looks really fine. So that's kind of what you want to look for in these. Well, looking good with just a little bit of ditzel on it or something okay moving along oh this is gonna be a long video oops um i guess i gotta move on a little bit here okay this one i really recommend for a couple reasons this is the 1913 i say fatima that's how i've always pronounced it t200 of the Cleveland Americans. And why it's super cool is it had, you can get yourself a card that had, here's La, La Joie right here. And over here is Joe Jackson. You see, you can get yourself a game, uh, a playing days game, Joe Jackson card. And these Fatimas are super sweet cards, these team cards and the regular issues are as well. So I think this, card could explode at some point. It should. I mean, it's got Joe, it's got Joe Jackson. It's got Lajue. And it, they don't go for extraordinary amounts of, of money. I recommend it. Um, yeah. Just look at this one because... Uh, the 15 Cracker Jacks, uh, if you can get one low, I mean, it's it's an old holder. It's Walter Johnson. It's got some little issues there. Not sure it should be a three with that scuffing. And you can see there's a little paper loss there. It's really overgraded. It's got a little crease there. But everybody bidding on this card, I, they're not saying... Oh, I'm not paying three money for that. I mean, that is, that's not a three. They just know. You just know. Okay, it's a great looking image. It's got beautifully rounded corners. It's got a little ditzel here, I guess is not. A, I don't know if that's on the... You, But you know what you get. And it's a Walter Johnson. And of the, uh, of the 1915 Cracker Jacks, man, the, the Tinker... Uh, the Walter Johnson, the Matthewson, the Wagner, the Lajue, the, and the Johnson. Those are the ones that I really would go for. And that's a card that I... It, it's really skyrocketed. It's really gone up in price the last few years. But recommend that one. Let's see. Um, a couple more of my recommendations. The V100, V meeting a Canadian issue. Babe Ruth. And a two. Shouldn't be a two. It's got a chunk of paper there. Um, not, pre, not all pre-war 
gets a little bit of a, a break on this, but sometimes it seems like they do just because the importance of the card. Um, that is a super duper rare card. Uh, and there's a cob. Let me see if I can. I've got. Here is the 1924 Willard's Chocolate. Let me see. Babe Ruth. Completely different looking card. This had just not all baseball players. It had just champions of sports. That's in a three. I think I, I have the cob of that too. Okay. Um, recommend that. Put it on your list. Mm, I'm going to skip over some of these. We're running so long here. Um, there's some Bond Bread uh, Robinsons in there. You know, there's 13 cards. The, the initial one is the, is the portrait. Um, let me see. I think I... Oh, I don't have one. Um, but there's some Bond Breads in there. Go for that. I'll show one more that I think is a really uh, great looking card that I kind of recommend uh, people take a look at this. This is 54 Red Heart Mantle. Everybody knows I love this card, but this isn't a four. And man, that looks good. I'm not sure why it's in a four. Maybe that's pressed down a little. I can't tell. But that's a good looking... Someone's going to get a... I mean, it, it looks so nice. I don't think you're going to... You're going to get it for what most fours go look like. Or what most fours go for. But I think you're going to get a card that looks like a six at least. Wow. So nice. Okay, now let's just do this real quick I, before we close out REA. We'll go to the ones that, uh, these, are car, these are the cards that have the most bids so far in the auction. Okay, uh, Eddie, an Eddie Matthews bat. Here's a beautiful uh, page uh, and a 1.5 that may very well be sitting on my desk in a couple weeks. I say that about every nice 49 page I see. And I never never happens. Um, so that got that's gotten a lot of business. Uh, the old E one hundred one anonymous set of fifty cobs. I'm, it's not his rookie card, but it's really early one, really popular card. Let's see what else we got going on. The Babe Dietrich uh, an auto. Here's a good one. This Wolverine news postcard. Top Ted Cobb, really a rare postcard. Got a lot of bids. Here is AM1015 with the famous bar back, which is really a common back. I think it's the most common if you watch my last video, uh, except for the uh, blank back. Here's mine with a the Indianapolis Brewing Company. That's middle of the road. Rarity for as far as backs. But there's only two Joe Jackson, so there's kind of rarity within. A lot of, see, a lot on that Matthewson, a lot of bids. Smart people. I'm maybe going to run through two pages of this. Here, here's uh, a Kalamazoo Bats, uh, Boston team card. I think I know a YouTuber that is going for that. Here's a nice seven. Uh, Thorpe's always popular. Always a lot of Ruth. A PSA eight, Gaudi. Got a lot. Here's that Philadelphia Caramel, the plank. These are all getting bids. So the ones that I really think but interesting are getting uh, bids. That Mantle's getting tons of bids. Let's see if anything else. Here's that uh, E91 Young. 
Here's a Cracker Jack Matthews 105. Let me take a look at that one. So someone on Net54 had a... Per- Maybe... I don't think this is it, but they had one that was centered just like this. And they... Oh, caramel there. Um, I don't think his had a look. Anyway, I think it went for 15000 And to me, that was a, a good, it was not a bizarre asking price. It was a really good asking price. I think he may have sent it to Heritage. This is not it. Uh, so we'll see what this one goes for, because that's a beautiful uh, copy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Holy schmoly. I really don't have to say much about that. Registration, spot on. Maybe just a tiny bit off. Look at that yellow. Does not quite make it up to the white, though. Yowzers. Uh, boy, get on that one. Don't be afraid of SGC. All these great cards are in SGC holders. You notice that? Mm, I emailed Rick about this one. He's not a postcard guy, but he is a Matthewson guy. And the novelty postcard is really a tough one. That's just a beautiful, beautiful postcard in a three. Just fantastic. Okay. All right. Let's go. Here's a Cy Young Bruner's bread, but we're going to be looking at a lot of Bruner's bread, I think, in uh, memory lane. Okay, real quick, highest price. We'll just see some of them that are highest prices. Here's that nine Aaron. This autographed Gaudi Gehrig. Broadleaf's a tough back. And it's a Cobb. Okay, here's this. I'll be interested to see what that goes for, this the leaf. Mm. So these are all the big bucks. There's some homes. This JK Cobbs. Uh, these are the ones that are the highest dollars. And, you know, the thing is, is some of these, you know, this Wagner here, it's a current bid 16500 I don't know what it's going to close at. But some of these, all of a sudden, they close, and they close, like, near what it is now. And other of them will go five, six times. They just explode on the last day and in overtime. So that, my friends, is Robert Edwards' auction. And then the memory lane... When I saw this, I, memory lane is hardly ever like really excites me. I, I, to be honest with you, but, but this this auction blew me away. Bam! Right off some W six hundreds. Here's a sporting life of Matthewson. Just get out your pocketbooks. I've only had a couple sporting life uh, W six hundreds, and one of them actually was in the original. That kind of that oxycellulose uh, packaging uh, that I got, it came in. Then I suppose it came in an envelope. I don't know. But I sold that at Love of the Game maybe 12 years ago. It was not a uh, stud Hall of Famer. Okay, so yeah, on uh, here's what I want to do on uh, Memory Lane is... Uh, first, we're going to go the interesting ones, but... Because page one and two are so good. The thing about this auction is kind of weird. They, they'll they show stud cards, and then they go down to ones that I don't think are nearly as interesting. All of a sudden, we'll break into some 60s cards, and then all of a sudden, you're showing BAM or bread cards. So uh, I can't just run through it. I gotta, I'm going to show a page or two, then I'm going to uh, have to just do it by lot, lot number. Here, here's a rambling. Oh, my God. So this is definitely um, Walter Johnson's rookie card. And that's going to go for a lot of money. We've seen some eights and maybe even a nine. And I think the nine was sheet cut. Uh, we saw that last year. Um, but boy, that's just... That's crazy. I recommend you bidding on it. And here's a plank. They have a plank too. It's in an SGC5. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and real up top, no, not, this is featured highlight is this Mathis in a dark cap seven. Um, that doesn't wow me, and I'm a big Matheson uh, guy. Here's a, a purple uh, Shimer. This is not, it's rare. This is a couple, two or three backs more common than my Indianapolis Brewing, the Herpel Shimer. Uh, here's a little Trevi for it. So Herpel Shimer was, is a clothier in uh, Michigan, right? And if you watch, like, whenever the Polar Express comes on around Christmas time, I cannot stop watching it. It's it's creeps me out, and it's it's I don't know what to think about it. But anyway, when the tr when the main character boy when he finally gets on the train, he picks him up from his house, and they're leaving town. Watch closely and, and stop it. They go right by Herschel uh, or Herpelsheimer's uh, fashion shop. There's a big sign that says Herpelsheimer's, which I thought was uh, cool. Uh, but that will go, let's see, that's in a six. That's just a super high high grade for those. Um, I thought this was an interesting, it's an Eddie, Eddie Collins uh, with a blank back. Uh, it, presumably that means it's scrap, meaning they printed a sheet, they didn't print the back, so someone backdoored it and hand cut it. Uh, so it'll never get a grade, it's authentic, but those are always cool. This is a big time card here. Uh, this one here, the M101 standard biscuit, this, just like these other ones we'd be looking at. It's not a Herschel, uh, Herpelsheimer back. It's not a famous bar back. This one is standard biscuit, which is a pretty common back, but it's a Jim Thorpe, which is like incredible. Then over here, you have one with a Morehouse, Morehouse baking, which is a pretty rare back. I, I'm not sure I've ever seen a Morehouse baking company back. And uh, it's maybe fifth, most rare, I would guess. So these really got my attention. Hey, this one's <laughs> it's rough. It is rough, but people, that is Jim Thorpe. And Jim Thorpe playing day cards are uh, not easily found. And here's the standard biscuit. We'll show the back of that. I should have shown the back of the Morehouse, but uh, here's the standard biscuit back. Okay. All right, let's finish up this page. These first couple pages are so so good. Okay, blah, blah, not thrilling me, not wowing me. I know they're high grade, but nope. Let's see what else we got here. See, it's really interesting. This Jordan stuff, Chicago Bulls courtside stadium chair, and some autograph stuff. Then all of a sudden... Something cool like this. The 1916 Boston Red Sox Stag brand sweaters team cabinet display. And there's my, my icon there is on Ruth. Never seen one of those before. We're running into some Ruths here. This is just beautiful. This E121. Uh, this is, I would love to have this. It's so centered. Looks so good. These cards have exploded in price, however. And also on page one, one of my faves. I love the Oxford Confectionery, Ruth. Mm, I have the Cobb. I have the Johnson. And I have... The Ruth, mine's in a three, a two, three, yeah. Paper, yeah, no kidding, they're uh, paper thin, but I mean, when we say paper thin, it's like really fine, fine paper. Um, I don't know, Jay Stottlemyre. Could make the play for that. Okay, let's finish up this page here, some more Ruths. Um, Andrew, no stuff cards. Maybe secretly vying for this. I have zero. I don't know. The Vibes is 72. This is not a strip card. It's not hand cut. PSA got it wrong. Here is mine in a 2.5. 
It's got a little smudgy stuff on the back, otherwise it's real good. And yeah, this is one that actually Andrew wanted me to bring to the National last year so I could show him. So I know he's interested in one. This one looks pretty good. Um, the Mark. Let me see what they're thinking on the Mark. Oh, could be this. Uh, I think that's the Mark right here and here and here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to log into this too. All right, so let's just finish up this page. These are good. Look at all the same image. The C92 Dockman and Sons, tough throwing image. And then the E101 and the E91, all with the same image for Wagner. I think I may have a bid in for that one. The Colgans. Wagner. Everybody likes those cold guns. They call these proofs. I don't know what that means. I doubt they're proofs. They're probably just hand cut, hand cut off of a display or a poster or sheet cut at the factory. I don't know. I don't think they're proofs, but that's what they call them. Um, here's another... Uh, uh, here, here's the E98 Cobb. I've shown mine before. Um, okay, here's a couple. Uh, this this is what wows me about this auction. A three and an E103. This Williams Caramel, they're, they're always... I'm, I don't know if I've seen a three. Probably have. But this is the nicest one I've ever seen. These are super thin. They're always dirty and crappy. And I guarantee a lot of people are looking at this card, including me. That's a big deal. Uh... I'd like to have the Matthewson too. They're always dark and uh, they look like they've been kicked down the street. There's a nice one, and this is high on my list. This is this is number one card for me in this auction. Uh, the tip top red, the 1910 is to uh, made to celebrate. They're just all Pittsburgh players from their 1909 World Series. Uh, the Horner pose, um, same as the T. Uh, 206. This card has exploded, unfortunately, and it exploded about the time where I took serious interest in one, and so I've kind of ridden it on up. I'm certain I won't be able to afford it, but uh, I can always try. Oh, gosh, we're still on page one, and you get crazy stuff like this. We looked at the uh, Colgan's chips. You, the, the, it, uh, here is rare. These Juju drums, same type of candy topper, little tin copper, but it's of uh, Honus Wagner and a 1.5. It's I think it's got some gobbledygook on the back. You want an expensive one? See if you can find the uh, Joe Jackson, which I think I've seen in the last ten years. Uh, okay, what? Oh God, this is why this auction just blew me away. My favorite card set. The E300 plows. Here's a Cobb and a four. It's a nice one. These cards were not... Uh, they're, they're from 1912, but they were undocumented, unheard of until... Uh, oh, very, very, very late 70s, early 80s. Uh, fantastic. Okay, let's, uh, there's a bunch of, I don't see, I don't know why there's just a whole bunch of Clementis here. I don't, I don't get that. Some nice turkey reds. Okay, so let me run through just a, just a couple, just do a couple my recommendations. <clears throat> and I, I see that we've already, I recommend that uh, Oxford Confectionery Ruth, the E98 Cobb, <coughs> we showed both of those. Um, now we just looked at those uh, Juju drums Wagner oh and we looked at that square proof I recommend that the, the Williams Caramel yes 
Let's look at this one. I've been looking for this card, but I've been looking for the right one. <clears throat> Here's another one in this auction. I don't think it's quite as good as that one that was in REA, as far as centering goes. But you miss it in REA, come search for it here. Um, here is another recommendation. <coughs> Excuse me. Super rare. D303 General Baking. Tris Speaker. That is a gorgeous card. And that card, I think there's, it's a 50 card set, I think. Let me see. And it is, it's not like the D304s. It is super, super tough. Um, speaking of D304s, I want to show that. Um, let me see. Because this auction has a crap load of them. This auction is insane. So the D304 has, what, three backs? The Bruners? The General Baking and the Butter Crust. General Baking is the rarest. Here's an insane General Baking cob. Now it's a four. And I mean, Andrew, may, maybe he's going for this one too. It's got some scuffy here. I don't know how it got a four. It's, it's a beautiful card. It's got some scuffy there. But uh, again, people that want this card and know about this card, they're not going to care about that. I have always thought about getting a Matthewson. See, look at all the, these D304s. They're fantastic. Come to this auction. See if there's a player you like. Let me see where, where my Maddie is. Here's the Matthewson. I've never been crazy about it. Maybe Rick, Vinny, Jalbaugh, Cars will get this one. Because it's a pretty nice one for a three. It just... They're a little bit... Not cartoonish, but just... Not a lot of detail to them. And it's got the Bruner's back. I'll show you the Bruner's back. Okay, so I just wanted to show you those because there is a lot of D304s. Insane. Here's a Cy Young. So good. I, I, I wish I had these. I wish I had a lot of these cards. This this has the uh, uh, butter crust back. Sweet. Guess they came in bread. There's a Wagner. Okay. Um, all right. Let's. This has probably been really long, but uh, those are my recommendations. Let's go and see what the top bids are. So, and this auction did not open, uh, but it opened, opened today. It closes on May 4th. So, boy, there's a lot of auction time there. So let's just look at, so far, who, who's bidding most on what? The, oh, my. Here's number two most bids. Are you insane? That is just a gorgeous card. Well over six figures. The 1914 Cracker Jack Matheson. That's a dream card. Just, just, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. So that's has the second most bids. First is it's W600. Oops. I wonder what I do here. Okay, I think I messed up. Okay, back to most bids. Okay, uh, here's that E121 Babe Ruth. It's beauty. Man, huh, all the ones that I'm recommending or I think are cool are the most bids. That Ramley, the Cobbs. Yep, yep, yep. Here's a beautiful Joe Jackson for you. 1914 and an SGC4. My recommendation is just 
go for it. The wife won't care. She really won't. She will get over it. Love that card. And the cob. Um, yeah, kind of everything we looked at is getting the most bids. Here's the plank. Uh, Cracker Jack. I think it's a really cool image. I've always liked that card. Um, did I, I know, you know, this, here, here's the E98 Cobb. It's the same image as that standard caramel we looked in the other auction, and very similar to the E94, except for the E94 is, doesn't show as much pant there. That one's getting a lot of bids. What else is getting a lot of bids here? Oh, uh, yeah, this early, this 1907, this... And I don't know how to pronounce it. Dichi rookie postcard. It's got two poses. It's got this one and the batting. This one's a lot more rare than his batting pose. So there's two postcards from this Dichi. I don't know. Uh, but I know that this pose, his fielding pose, is a lot more rare. Uh, there's the Walter Johnson. So a lot of bids. Not necessarily highest price. These are not the highest price. These are just the ones that people are giving a lot of bids to. And I'm just I'm running through this just to see if we run across something that we haven't already looked at. Here's the 2000 or the 1914 Wagner. It's the same image as the 15. Okay, so these cards. Oh, here's the here's the uh, Williams Caramel Cobb. That's getting a lot. Here's that Joe darn Joe Jackson I gave away <laughs> years ago. Darn it. Okay. Okay, so this is what people are bidding on. And uh, oh, remind me to go to back to REA. We'll go back to REA. Because I want to, with disclosure, show you what... Um, what I'm bidding on. So... I need to log in here. Um, I'll just cover this here. Sorry. Try one more time. There's so many passwords to these things. Okay, so let's see what I'm bidding on in this auction. Let's see my bids. Okay, so I am bidding on the Ramley Johnson 5. I won't be winning that, but at least I'll follow it. Oh, and this very interesting uh, Babe Ruth postcard. Associate Anami. Only example. I won't be winning that either. And I'm bidding on the Bruners Matheson. Those are the ones I currently am bidding on. Will I bid on something else? Uh, maybe. So let me... Uh, I want to get back into... REA... I want to show you what I'm bidding on that. Okay. 
bid now. All right, I'm logged in. Okay, so here's what I'm bidding on in this auction for full disclosure. Okay, I'm bidding on the satchel page. Ha ha ha. Um, the Philadelphia Caramel. Cobb. I'm bidding on the E92 American Caramel Wagner. I'm bidding on this fantastic E93 Standard Caramel Cobb that would go with my E98 run. And then I'd have to start getting E94, so maybe I shouldn't go for that. Here's a beautiful white border bat off Cobb. It has big borders. I'm bidding on that one. The Sporting Life, it's going to go too high. This has gotten to be a grandioso popular card. Uh, this JKA Cobb, the Star Candy Cobb. I, I will not place any more bids on this one. I mean, it's already at that. That's ridiculous for that. The paid short print. Here's a pretty nice, a uh, couple pretty nice mantles. Let's look at this one. Yeah, uh, and uh, well, first let's look at this. Um, this is this is interesting. These uh, 1964 sports here with stickers. These are extraordinarily rare. Uh, and uh, see this, you see them cut out from this, and they're very very rare. The mantle it goes for big bucks, and this is a whole sheet of them. It's insane. A sheet of four. Let me see. Let me see what that says about it. But I'm bidding on that. I, I probably will not bid further, but. Uncut sheet featuring four examples of the unusual 1964 Sports Hero sticker series. Um, so we got Mantle, a K line with Don Demeter and Bill Freehand. RE has only offered two single Mantle stickers from this issue ever. And the recent one sold for $11,700. Uh, these stickers were a giveaway, and that's just for a, one sticker. That's just for. <laughs> the one sticker. This is an uncut sheet of them. Uh, so that's insane. Uh, so stop looking at it because I don't want you to bid on it. Look at this mantle. It's, it's so good with a mark. Let's take a look. Pretty nice looking for two, don't you think? Let's see. We may have to read to see where the, where the mark is. Be a type two. It's got the quote unquote missing pixel right there. No black rim around the border here. Shaggy dog stars. And uh, overlap here of the top black and overlap here. Um, let's see. And because it's a type 2, the arrows are going to the right. Oh, here it is. There's an erasure mark. It means nothing. Uh, this is Someone's going to get a great card, uh, but that's your mark. It's somebody erased something there. Okay, and the Home Run Derby. So that's kind of what I am I'm bidding on it. I want to go back to the auction because I don't... Let me see. Did I do the highest price yet? Uh, yeah, it's kind of all that front page stuff. Nothing terribly interesting. Okay, so two auctions. Robert Edwards auction. Memory Lane auction. Fantastic stuff. Memory Lane has all those D304 bread issues and... Uh, there's candy cards, and REA just has just a great offering. But go to the auction because I guarantee you're going to find what you collect there. This is kind of what I collect. And so I'm trying to get you guys into some of this uh, screwier stuff. But uh, um, if you have zero interest in what I showed you, I guarantee if you go to these auctions, you will find something right up your alley. And since we got it here, let's, here is, uh, here's my uh, 1969 top supers that I have. There's the Mace in a nine, the Reggie Jackson in a nine, and the Mantle in an eight. 
And of course, I really love this card. This is the, uh, the only known copy. It's the proof of this one. It was clearly on a sheet and it's blank back, but there, this is the only one. The uh, top super proof. So, okay, long video. It's what I call a driver where you're just on your way to work. You listen part on the way to work, part uh, driving home. Not something when you're sitting around with the family. But I hope you enjoyed it. And let me, uh, what I would like in the comments is what you enjoyed, what you saw from me. But I would also really like to hear, if you've looked through these two uh, auctions, what grabbed your eye, what you're going for, what you're really interested. We're all in this together. It's no secret. Why does it have to be a big secret what everybody's bidding on? Because you're either the, the highest bidder or you're not. And believe me, any card you're bidding on out there, there's a ton of people bidding as well in one end. So you just got to pull up your pants, I guess, and do the best you can. Um, Sometimes I, I, I pull up my pants and, and do very well, and a lot of times I pull up my pants and then I drop my pants back down and go whimpering into the corner because it's everything's just way too much. So hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you later.